uh, to find out what their reasons are for doing that and what sorts of things would make them change their mind in terms of their road user behaviour and what we've seen today is the product of that. Uh, we know uh, from our statistical collection that uh, about 30% of people so far this year who have been involved in uh, uh, fatality crashes, speed has been a contributing factor to that. We also know that on average we detect a person speeding every two seconds in South Australia. These are significant numbers and these are people who are taking significant risks on our road. When you choose to speed, regardless of how good you think you are as a driver, you are increasing risk. You are increasing the risk of a collision occurring and you're also increasing the consequences. The higher the speed, the higher the impact and you are actually putting other people's lives at risk. When you are speeding and you think you're capable of driving your vehicle in a manner that you think is appropriate, what you can't account for is other road user behaviour. So the risks are uh, un unacceptable and we require people to do the right thing on our roads and be responsible for the way they use South Australian roads to reduce the risk for all road users. Commissioner, you've had a... October long weekend there were three fatalities. Can we expect to have zero this long weekend? Uh, we always aim for zero uh, lives lost over significant holiday periods. Um, this, this year we've uh, commenced Operation High Impact Fatal 5 which commenced on the 1st of October and will run through the entire month including a focus on Operation Safe Long Weekend for the October Long Weekend. We remind people again and again when you are using our roads think about the way you're using them, think about your family, think about the people in the car with you. Don't let the fact that you're on a holiday and m moving towards a holiday destination cloud your judgement when you are using the roads. Commissioner, you've <clears throat> had first-hand experience of a fatality this year with your very close colleague. Um, without going into the details, because it is before the courts, can you um, potentially give the, the, the public some insight into how grief does affect even the most senior of police? Uh, police are no different to anybody else. Um, involved in a, in a serious collision, whether it be a, a collision that results in the, the loss of life or a debilitating injuries, it has a devastating impact on family and friends um, and we have to learn to live with those impacts uh, on a daily basis. It's much better if we can prevent those sorts of injuries from occurring uh, and uh, we stop people from losing their lives on our road by just taking, taking time to think about uh, our road use, driving within the speed limit and reducing the risk of those collisions occurring. All the indicators are, as a result of COVID-19, that people are holidaying within South Australia and that does mean driving on our roads. We should expect higher volumes of people getting away for the long weekend in South Australia and we just urge people to do so safely. Uh, make sure that you enjoy your holiday but get home safely as well. Commissioner, you said in putting this campaign together you spoke to people who speak and, and what would stop them from doing so. What's the research on how these types of ads might affect the general public when they see them, when they watch them? What's the effect that that it has on them and what do you hope well having, having seen the ad yourselves I, I'm sure you will uh, you'll be startled by the consequences that uh, uh, I think show the, the impact of a collision but I think it really highlights the fact that uh, it's not just about you on the road you can't account for every other road user and uh, you don't want to be the cause of somebody else losing their life or being seriously injured when can we expect to see these on our screens and on buses and billboards? Yeah. The, uh, the ad that you've seen now uh, will start appearing on our screens uh, immediately and uh, we'll be running this ad over the, the course of a three year period on staggered, on staggered occasions. Uh, the bus that you see behind us will be out and about and the, the billboards will be placed at uh, what we deem to be high risk or high volume locations to make sure that we get this message through to as many people as possible. Commissioner, it's quite a shocking ad, it's quite a shock value, is that mm. deliberate? Absolutely deliberate. Uh, there are different measures, measures we, we can utilise to, to get a message across and we do that through research as well. Uh, it's clear to us that um, uh, shocking, confronting ads have their place, but there are other me measures that we also need to use. So we mix up the messaging and uh, attract different audiences and get that, get that key message of road safety to as many people as possible. And we've all been guilty of creeping up, so to speak, mm. with our speed. What's the, can you talk us through from an official point of view, the difference between say 62 to 71 in a 70 zone, for example? Well, it's, we, the statistics show us that uh, increasing your speeds, even in, um, in, in small, small measures, uh, carries greater consequences. Uh, one of the highest risk activities is to creep over the speed limit within built up areas in 50 kilometre zones and 60 kilometre zones. It may not result in a fatality crash, but it will certainly have the greater potential for a vehicle collision, which may result in a serious injury to a person. 
Um, we need to really think about how we use our roads. Speed limits are there for a reason. They are identified through extensive research and people should comply with speed limits. And um, we've had the Commission do very similar things. Why is this going to have any more impact through you guys than, than the MAC previously? Well, the Media Road Safety Unit within the South Australia Police uh, took over from the work that was being done by the Motor Accident Commission. Um, the Motor Accident Commission did uh, exceptional work in, in conveying that road safety message to the South Australian community. Uh, we've taken the, the baton from the MAC and we're continuing with that sort of work. So we're hopeful that the, the messaging you see here is consistent with the good work that was done by the Motor Accident Commission and we meet that benchmark and continue to promote road safety within South Australia. Uh, I haven't had any direct feedback from uh, uh, Health, SA Health, who are responsible for making those assessments. Uh, our staff have said that crowd behaviour was exceptionally good. Um, I think the absence of any criticism or concerns from Health is probably a positive. So uh, it was a great outcome from a, a sporting event perspective and uh, crowd behaviour was as we would anticipate it to be from a policing perspective. Commissioner in the lead up. Sorry? You're not aware of any COVID I'm not aware of any, um, and we have a daily briefing, so if there was anything significant, it would have been brought to my attention. Commissioner, in the lead up to the preliminary final here in a couple of weeks, is it likely we'll see bigger crowds or a, a sort of a rejig the Adelaide Oval's COVID plan? Well, the crowd management and crowd sizes is a responsibility of State Health. They have, um, they have the obligation for um, working with the Stadium Management Authority in relation to the COVID management plan, which is in effect here. And you've seen over recent weeks that they've been stepping up the number of uh, patrons that are able to attend and participate. So uh, that'll be a health consideration over the next few days. I'm, I'm sure they'll be looking at what, what this behaviour was like and whether that lends itself to additional uh, crowd capacity or whether we're at the mark where we can safely manage an event at this point. But as the state coordinator and someone who signs off on all of this, do you have an expectation yourself that unless there's something massively changed, the health advice is still pretty good. Would you like to see more crowds for the preliminary final? It's a big game, yeah. it's an important game for the state. Well, the more people we can get to enjoy these events and get life to as close to normal as possible is, is the best thing for South Australia. But we need to remember, COVID-19 has not gone away. Um, it is still something that threatens the South Australian community, even though we're in a very good spot at the moment. The current management plan for the stadium uh, provides an environment that lets the, the most number of people enjoy the event, whilst at the same time ensuring that we are abiding by safe practices that minimise the risk of COVID-19 spread if it finds its way into South Australia. Absolutely. So it's not simply about increasing numbers just because uh, we've had one good event, it's about finding that balance though we can maintain those principles that ensure safety. Now we're all looking forward to some assumption that it's vertical, you know. Yeah. Um, are there any more rules in terms of that, would there be more COVID marshals? Are Cuts going to need another COVID plan? No, uh, the, the existing COVID plan that uh, most venues would have downloaded would be sufficient. Uh, it's simply uh, ensuring that COVID marshals understand uh, what they're allowed to permit. Um, we'll have our compliance officers checking as well and providing support to venues that are moving into this new set of arrangements. Uh, it's really pleasing to uh, identify the fact that we've got somewhere in the order of nearly 100,000 COVID marshals uh, who have undertaken the training and are out and about reminding us all of how we should behave when we're you know, mixing together and taking advantage of the relatively relaxed uh, environment we have here compared to other places in Australia and overseas. Um, Commissioner, with those restrictions easing, how much of a responsibility do patrons have to follow the rules? I mean, we saw some rules rolled back with nightclubs mm. several months ago when they were opened up and then we had to scale them back because people weren't doing the yep. right thing. What expectation do you have for the public? I think it's really important for people to remember that uh, you know, we, we put a lot, lot of obligations on businesses and venues to um, manage events and activities in a certain way, but each of us has an individual responsibility in relation to uh, physical distancing, hygiene practices, uh, looking, about, looking at how we interact with other people, because these are the things that allow us to relax other um, current restrictions. We all have a responsibility to behave in a different way because of COVID-19, and the more that we do that, uh, the greater opportunities we have for taking a step back from restrictions. And for those people who might be at these venues vertically consuming, perhaps getting a bit relaxed, maybe a bit rowdy, do you think that they need to keep in mind the, the businesses that they're at when they, they might be starting to behave poorly? Well, the, your individual behaviours can have an adverse impact on these businesses and we know that we've got COVID marshals in place. COVID marshals don't have any authorities, they are there to remind us as patrons about what our obligations are. If you choose to act in a way that is contrary to the current 
accepted requirements, you are putting a business in jeopardy and that business may uh, suffer a monetary fine, uh, they may be shut down for a period um, and I don't think anybody wants that. We all want to, we want to thrive as much as we possibly can in, in difficult circumstances. And also just quickly with, uh, with the weather, probably the nicest we've seen in, in quite a while and, and things heating up a bit, do you also have a reminder for people that are out and about perhaps going to the beach, that sort of mm. thing, that, uh, that they should be also keeping in mind the rules despite you know, the fact that we can well, I think given the fact that uh, South Australia is doing so well in terms of um, keeping COVID-19 out of our state and uh, preventing it from spreading and regularly seeing uh, zero days of new infections, it does lend itself to uh, a level of complacency creeping in. We have seen excellent compliance from the community generally. Uh, our police response has always been to remind and educate people. I think we've got a good response as a result of that. Um, just because the weather's good doesn't mean we can forget about COVID-19. Uh, COVID-19 doesn't respond to weather and uh, we just want people to continue doing what they're doing and please just act, act in a safe way. It's, it's really quite stupid to commit any crime anywhere. Um, if you're stupid enough to commit them in the city, you should understand that we have a comprehensive CCTV network which is monitored 24-7. And uh, I think we've seen over the last few days several instances that have um, uh, come to the surface where CCTV plays a really important role in detecting crime and giving police the opportunity to respond quickly and, and arrest and apprehend people. Are we seeing more than usual at all at the moment in the CBD Commissioner? Just given it, I think there was another one recently on Hindley Street as well. Mm. Uh, look, uh, the, the activities that have sort of come to our attention over the last few days are indicative of what happens uh, most days or most weeks. Um, that uh, people have a, a greater awareness of our capability in this regard, uh, but this is a, a tool that we rely on virtually on a daily basis. Commissioner, in terms of can I just? And the, the long weekend, um, are you seeing more people coming in that need quarantine? And if so, is, do we have more many hotels that are opening up? Are you seeing more hmm. out of the city? Uh, the current level of restrictions for South Australia in terms of movement from other states and territories. Uh, essentially has eliminated the requirement for uh, quarantine at home, except for people who are given exemptions by health coming from Victoria. Uh, the repatriation of Australians into back to Australia uh, is an ongoing commitment that we have as a, as a, a part of Australia, and we're doing our bit to support that. Uh, we are opening another hotel, I think, today, uh, where we're increasing our capacity to receive returning Australians. Uh, obviously, that comes with a resource commitment, both from a police health and security point of view, but that's currently being managed. And as that uh, inflow of returning Australians continues, then we'll manage our capacity uh, going forward. Commissioner, can I? that take it up to in total? Uh, I think as of uh, midnight last night, we had somewhere in the order of about 900 people in supervised quarantine. Uh, we have greater capacity than that, and we're looking to expand that uh, within our resource limitations. So five six? We're moving to five, and uh, uh, given an assessment of resources, uh, that, that may well increase, but we won't make a commitment to in increasing the number of hotels available until we know we can properly resource it and ensure the safety of the South Australian community by safely managing the people coming into these Medi hotels. Commissioner, can I just ask you about borders? Um, firstly, have you been pleased with the amount of, the, with the level coming from New South Wales and ACT over the past couple of weeks? Are you pleased with that and is there any comment on that. Secondly, will the Transition Committee look at Victorian borders next week as well as other hospitality restrictions such as standing up drinking inside? Um, fr from a, a, a border perspective in terms of the number of people coming in from the ACT in New South Wales, I think it's been a great a benefit for the state. We've, we have seen a, a significant influx of people coming into South Australia. Uh, we know people are travelling here to visit family uh, for holiday purposes and for business, so all of those things are, are positives and uh, it, the reason, it's the reason why we need to critically evaluate all of these restrictions and make moves on them as quickly as we can. I think the current situation in Victoria um, will continue to be monitored by health and will be updated in terms of Victoria's progress by uh, Professor Spurrier. Uh, I don't see any changes happening uh, in, the, in the very near future in terms of Victoria, but we are hopeful that if they continue to, to uh, reduce the virus as much as they are, that we'll be able to move on those restrictions as well. The, um, the, the, the consideration of other restrictions is essentially on the agenda for every meeting, so we'll, we'll see what the, the discussions and the, the updates from that meeting present to us in terms of opportunities, but uh, I think we've just made a significant step as of midnight tonight, 
and uh, we'll see how that plays out and then look for where we can take further steps in the same direction. Right, the Sorry, last one. Will you have some leniency? I mean, if someone's caught with a beer standing up at, say, 10 instead of midnight, is, that, is your advice to people to stick to that deadline? Um, the whole approach we've taken to enforcing these restrictions has been one of support and uh, working with the community. Uh, we've given countless warnings, uh, we've given tons of advice and we'll continue to do that. We're, we're not out there to uh, sort of make criminals of people who every other day of the week are ordinary people trying to do the right thing. We know people are thinking about COVID-19, we're here to support them. We will take a hard line approach with people who deliberately disregard those directions and uh, uh, so far we've seen that that supportive approach has been very effective. Okay. Thank you. We know that in the last uh, year, uh, as the Commissioner has pointed out, uh, over 30% of fatal crashes uh, are attributable in some way to excess speed. And we know that uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, expiations and extra portions are made to uh, every year. Obviously, uh, fatal crashes, serious crashes, are completely avoidable and preventable. So the key message uh, this weekend especially is uh, remember, we did lose three lives on our roads uh, this week and last year. To remind that each and every one of us to do the right thing. Fatal crashes and serious incidents on our roads are completely avoidable and they're completely preventable. But we all have to play our part. And that's a, a good reminder this weekend to do the right thing uh, on, our, on our roads. Will the billboards be out this weekend though? Yeah, billboards will be uh, selected uh, venues uh, around the state and they'll be, uh, they'll be kicking, kicking on, uh, as I understand, from, from this weekend. Minister, how much does the campaign cost? Uh, several hundred of, of thousands of dollars. Uh, uh, my understanding is that it was also filmed locally in a COVID safe manner as well. Um, and I, I've got no doubt that it's money well spent uh, because you cannot put a price uh, on, a, on a line. Uh, we know that we lost three lives uh, lost uh, this time last year on this exact weekend. So it's a reminder for us, to, uh, for all of us. We know that there's going to be more cars on the road, especially in our regional areas this weekend. Do the right thing. Playing your trip, drive safe, drive safe. Uh, there is uh, absolutely no excuse uh, for a serious incident or a fatality crash on our roads. Uh, these things are completely avoidable. Uh, we, we've all got to do our part. Minister, you supported the police uh, ensuring that everyone has a good time tonight, but have that deadline and make sure they uh, follow those directions. If you look at what's happening uh, around the world and uh, especially on the East Coast, some of the unfortunate instances we've seen with, with police, we see none of that here in South Australia. Our, pol our police uh, are doing an exceptional job at the moment, keeping us safe, making sure that they protect lives in what is a very challenging time. Whether it's on the border, uh, whether it's at the meeting hotels, uh, whether it's in the streets, they're doing a great job. So let's also remember them uh, this weekend as well. Uh, they do a fantastic job, and as I said, any life lost on our roads is a tragedy. It's tragic not only for the families of the victims involved, but it's also very distressing for our, our frontline, hardworking men and women, workers and volunteers. Minister, a, a whistleblower cool. has passed off. Tell her what I'm doing. Just tell her what I'm doing. Just tell her what I'm doing. 